حسبنا الله نعم الوكيل حسبنا الله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم مدد يا صاحب الصحيح الشهر يمكن زير أباني مدد we are asking permission and we are asking support from our Sheikh Sheikh Abdul Karim Al-Kibris Ya Rabbani to send us something so that we can take and we can put into our lives in these uh, days of extreme confusion we must begin everything with the Shahadat because the Shahadat now it cleans everything up the power of the Shahadat it can give life to the one who is dead that his heart is because everything in this world right now what we do, what we eat, what we see ah, is bringing us straight away to unbelief, to kufr. Let's repeat our shahada saying, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sallam. Now with this shahada, we can begin on a very strong foundation, inshallah Rahman. The ayat that we were saying, we're hearing in the khutbah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying what? Anybody remember? You were there, right? At the khutbah. What is that ayat? Say, Ajinai. Remember me, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, and I will remember you. And give thanks to me. And do not make a kufr. Remember me, and I will remember you. And give thanks to me. And do not make unbelief kufr. Do not be ungrateful. Because one of the meanings of kufr, a kafir, is the one who forgets, who is ungrateful, who rejects Allah's mercy. That is the ayat. You look around these days, those who are claiming the Ahli Sunnah is rejecting this ayat. How many masjids you see out there that is holding on to the ayat that says, Remember me and I will remember you. Fazkuruniyazkurkum. Coming from the word what? Zikr. How many masjids you can make a zikr? Past two years, with the blessings of our Sheikh, we went up and down this whole continent, trying to see, trying to put our finger on the pulse of the Muslims on this continent. Whether you were born here or you came here from other countries, or you found Islam, trying to see, this is ayat fit into these masjids that we went to. Remember me and I will remember you. Majority of the masjids, oh, they ban the zikr, the remembrance of Allah. And we are complaining that Allah is not remembering us. So many, before we went there, they already made a big uh, fitna about us. So we came with some reputation. That's okay. Some, they're just coming to check us out. We've seen unbelievers, Jews and Christians and unbelievers, when we say Allah, they say Allah. But we've seen so many Muslims, when we say Allah, they're just sitting there looking at us like we are the strangest people on earth because we say Allah. They refuse to say Allah. Unbelievers are saying Allah with us to make a zikr, showing the proper manner. And Muslims, with so much knowledge, they don't want to remember Allah. Hmm. So remember me and I will remember you. And give thanks to me. Look. How many we are catching. How many we are seeing. Look at the nation, at the ummah these days. How many are thanking their Lord. So many are going to say, thank Allah for what? Oh, once you say that, you enter already into a kufr. 
All these things are happening. Thank Allah for what? So we're not remembering Allah and Allah is not remembering us. We're not thanking Allah. We are complaining non-stop. Complaining non-stop. And because of that, our belief is a big question mark. We enter into the unbelief, disbelief, making a kufr. That time, it doesn't matter how much you pray, how much you recite the Quran, how much you are going to go spending so much money going to Umrah and going to the Hajj. The faith is missing. The faith is missing. Because now you are complaining non-stop. And the one who complains about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in reality he is challenging Allah's decision. Complaining. Something happens to a man, he doesn't like it. Majority don't try to understand it. Majority is not looking for the reason or for the wisdom that is happening. Majority are not asking themselves why. They can ask Allah why. They ask everyone else why, but they're not asking themselves why. If they ask themselves why, we will find the answer. If we ask others why and asking Allah why, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to know that everything good that happens to you, it is coming from us. And everything that is bad is happening from your ego. So what makes a man to stop asking questions about himself? His ego. And the ego is pulling us to unbelief. Don't look towards others. Don't look to the outside. Before you bra blaming the shaitan, before you blaming this dunya and your desires, look first to your ego. Which is why the shaykhs, they are saying the ego it is more powerful than shaitan. The ego it is more powerful than shaitan. Powerful in what? In its disobedience. It is the most powerful creature that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ever created that is disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have that inside of us. And if we are not understanding and controlling that and pulling it down and stepping on it, then from the outside it looks like we are some kind of creature, but from the inside we're a wild beast. From the outside you can look like you're a Muslim. From the outside you can look like you're a believer. From the outside it looks like you're very holy, you're very good. But inside it is a very wild animal, a beast inside. That with just the smallest hmm, provocation, just the smallest excuse, is just going to blow up. And we are living in those days. There is no shukur to Allah. You cannot have shukur to Allah if you don't remember Him. You cannot have shukur to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you don't remember Allah. Because that ayat is also saying, Remember me and I will remember you and you must give shukur to me. The shukur, it is coming because you remember Allah. You forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's why you complain. You forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's why you are not making a shukur. To make a shukur is not just when something bad that is happening to you, something good that is happening to you, something bad that is happening to you too. Who is going to believe these days if something bad that is going to happen to you and you're going to make a shukur? We are trained to believe anything bad happens to us, it is a bad. It is not good and we should not make a shukur. But another ayat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, maybe the good thing that you want is, is not good for you. And maybe the thing that you don't like, it is a blessing to you. Where is all this coming from? Because the ayat, it is open. This is coming from ignorance. But where is this ignorance and arrogance and heedlessness coming from? Because a man is not remembering his Lord. 
It all begins with a zikr. Because if a man is not remembering his Lord, who is he remembering? Who? Himself. His nafs. Himself. And that is a shirk. So he starts thinking, these things happened to me because I did it. So these things must happen to me if I do things. There is no religion in your life anymore. There is no religion and Allah in our lives anymore. Allah is only uh, something that the Muslims turn to facing the Qibla five times a day. Other than that, this is my life. I made this life. There has to be separation. This is my life and this is a religion. Don't bring religion into everything. There is no such thing as religion in Islam. Islam is a deen. Deen means it is a way of life. It is not a religion. The way they're describing religion is like you have a life and religion is a part of life. Believing in Allah, it is just one part of life. For the Muslims, for the believers, if you don't believe in Allah, you have no life. And you have no afterlife until you believe in Allah and His Prophet. Because the life that is the belief of only of your nafs, of your ego, that is not a life. That is a torturement. So if there's no zikr of Allah, if there's no remembrance of your Lord, cannot be shukur. If you don't have shukur, of course you're going to stop believing. You can go up and down as many times as you want. You will stop believing. You won't have faith. You can be reading the Quran 24 hours. Faith is not going to enter into your heart. There are so many hadiths in Sharif about this. People who have the religion, but they don't have faith. People who have the practice, but don't have faith. This is first to me and to you and to others who wants to listen. This is the condition now. Because we are seeing there is no more remembering Allah. Because when you remember Allah, you have to think. You remembering Allah is not just taking a tasbih and pulling and say, Allah, 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 Allah. That's not remembering Allah. Remembering the Prophet Salawat al-Sharif is not just Allahumma Allah, 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 Allah. It is not. Like that, you can have a, make a robot to say Allah 24 hours. That is making a zikr too. You can put on uh, MP3 player playing salawats whole day. That means that MP3 player must be very holy because it's making a salawat. We've come to the point now. Because the zikr of Allah must make you to think, must make you to understand your Lord, must make you to understand yourself, must make you to understand your Lord. Hazrat Ali Karamallah Wajha is saying, every sickness is from you and every cure is in you. His saying is continuing and he's saying, the open book, the manifest book, Meaning the Quran Kerim is in you, is within you. You are it. If you only sit and think. It is easy to go up and down. It is not easy to sit and to think. Because now, when you are going to think, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no, 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 you are not going to think according to just your ego and the dunya. There is a way to thinking. You are going to think the way we want you to think. And the ego says, no, I want to think the way I want to think. What I think is, you are you and I am me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, I am your Lord and you are my creature. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, obey Allah, obey the Prophet and obey your rightly guided leaders. There is a protocol to thinking, which is why there is no philosophy in Islam. 
There is reality. There is haq. And if you have not experienced that, you follow the people of haq. Because with taqlid, with imitation, you will become. Just by imitating, you will become. If you imitate the good ones, you will become. If you imitate the bad ones, Holy Prophet Laissat was saying, if you imitate a nation, you will be one of them. Who is speaking about such hadiths now? Or is the world so filled with love, so filled with peace and tolerance and harmony and understanding that the so-called alims and ulamas and shaykhs, they're not bringing out these hadiths? And we listen to them, it's as if this whole world is just filled with love. <laughs> you need to be a saint or a scholar to understand that this world is filled with evil and hate. So now, we finish the holy month of Rabbi Lawal. Thousands, millions celebrating the Mawlid of the Prophet <coughs> But only a handful understand what that Mawlid is. Only a handful understand why. You are thanking Allah for that one, but who is that one? <coughs> you are praising Him, praising Him, praising Him. You can praise. It is good. Sahabi Kiram, they did not spend their whole lives just sitting and praising him. They did not. Now, the Prophet ﷺ in the Ahli Sunnah Akidah, what is he? Who is he? Prophet ﷺ is Hazir. And Nazir. He is present, present, alive, and he is giving warning. Is this an Ahli Sunnat Akira belief? Yes. If you don't believe this, you're out. If you're out, you can be whatever you want to be. You're not within the Ahli Sunnah. The Prophet ﷺ, he said Islam is going to be divided into 73 groups. Only one is saved. And they asked him and he said, those who follow my sunnah and the sunnah of my sahabis. This is known as the Ahli Sunnah. So Prophet ﷺ is Hazir and Nazir. He is present. And he's giving a warning. Who? represents the Prophet physically. The ruling of the Prophet, his power. That for 1400 years we have one that is representing him. That for the past hundred years we have no one representing him. Who is that one? Khalifa. One representing him. So there's no representation of Rahmata lil alamin here in this world, of the mercy to the universes here in this world. There's no one representing Rahmat. Rahmat is lifted and you don't see Rahmat in this world anymore. Muslims today who make zikr and make salawat, they find it very difficult if we tell them Prophet is alive and his hazir, he's everywhere. They find it. They say, no, he cannot be. He's just a man. You believe shaitan is everywhere at any time. And you cannot believe that the Holy Prophet والسلام, he is everywhere. They say only Allah is everywhere. Allah, Allah. These days with your phone, you can be everywhere. You think it's such a big deal. So there is no presence. There is no Hazir. There is no one representing the Prophet. 
Is there a nazir? Is there warning? Where are those ones warning the nation? Where are those ones warning the nation? Where are the alims and the ulamas warning the nation? They just have a very big conference in Turkey, in the TV, <laughs> debating. Mahdi exists or he doesn't exist? Is this something put into Islam or is this something that is inside of Islam? Is this something that is important or is this not important? Conclusion, oh, you don't have to believe in Mahdi salam if you're a Muslim. Because if you don't believe in Mahdi, you will not believe in Dajjal. Because Mahdi salam is coming to destroy the system of Dajjal. So that means that you're not understanding the world that we're living now. This is already this world of Dajjal. You want to think that this is a world of love and peace and harmony and unity. MashaAllah, big game that they are playing. So there is no warning. If you don't believe this is Ahir Zaman, how can you warn? You're just going to say, oh, it's just another normal year. Millions of people are suffering, billions maybe. It's normal. There is complete tyranny that we are doing to ourselves and to nature, to this whole planet. It is normal. This is not Ahir Zaman. Don't believe this is Ahir Zaman. Because by denying Mahdi salam, you have to deny the signs of the Ahir Zaman. So there's no Hazir in Nazir. Those ones representing him. They are not present and they're not giving a warning. What are they doing? Understanding. Hold on tightly to your share. Remember Allah. We must give thanks to Allah. We must move away from things that takes our belief. We must have more belief, inshallah. Be around those who have more belief. Don't try to have belief looking on Google and Yahoo for it to give you a belief. We are the most foolish one that way. Look to those ones that have more belief. Inshallah, Rahman. May we be in safety. Wa min Allahu tafiq. Rumatil Habib.